Congressman Ruben Gallego is a Democrat representing Arizona's 7th Congressional District. He's spoken extensively about his experience on the 6th, and he joins me now. Um, I, I got, I, you know, <laughs> I spent a lot of time around politicians, and there's a lot of things politicians do. I think there's a lot of stereotypes in them that are unfair, that they're shifty, that they speak out of both sides of their mouth. They do one thing in public and one thing in private. They're ambitious and conniving. I've never seen anything quite like Ted Cruz in terms of embodying these. But what do you make of what he did? Uh, I mean, he is the ultimate craven politician uh, who will do anything, uh, sell anything, you know, not defend anything that matters to him, provided that it, you know, ultimately leads him to his whatever uh, aspirational goal is, which I think is still president. Um, but look, you, you know, this is a problem that is uh, across the Republican Party. Uh, they've lost all sense of direction. They're no longer a party of policy and ideas. They're a party that is just a cult of personality. Uh, and if you are a good Republican uh, elected official, you have to stand by uh, Donald Trump and you have to basically align with him. And part of that is the sheer denial of the fact that there was political violence, that there was terrorism, uh, you know, on January 6th. Uh, it's a sad statement for Cruz. And, you know, I've been in politics now for um, uh, probably 10 years. Uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth selling out your family like he did when he sold out his dad and his wife. It's not worth selling out your own soul, especially for someone like Donald Trump. Uh, and to grovel at the, you know, at the knees of somebody like Tucker Carlson, uh, it's definitely uh, not worth it. I would rather be out of politics than have to do something like that. Yeah, I remember, you know, I, I, I once, I had a friend once who ran for office, and I remember having a conversation with him before he ran where we were going to, like, make a list of things he wouldn't do or say and put it in a safe when he went to run so that we, and we would have the key for it that we could go and, like, take it out and be like, you can't do that, buddy, and I think someone uh, uh, should do that there. Um, usually the, your family that does that. <laughs> what's that? It's usually your family that does that for you. Yeah, or someone, some sort of intervention. Uh, um, th but but your point here is, I mean, Cruz is a sort of ridiculous example, but like this is now, this is the litmus test. I mean, I, I think what right. you saw a year ago was people felt like they could say we can, this was horrible. And, and uh, the Senate, I remember the Senate Republicans tweeted out like, this is not who we are. There's a lot of like, now, granted, the majority of the caucus in the House that you serve with voted for the coup, okay? But they could at least condemn the violence. Even that now. Condemning violence, and this seems to be an important thing if you're going to run a liberal democracy in which conflict is resolved through nonviolent means, even condemning the violence now is not allowed. Again, like, because the violence points directly at Donald Trump. It is a direct attack on Donald Trump. So if you are attacking, if you're saying this was a violent uh, coup or if it was a violent act, you're basically saying that that was pushed by dear leader. Uh, and when you, you can't attack dear leader, dear leader is perfect, right? Uh, so that's what's happening right here. This all points back to the cult of personality that is surrounding Donald Trump. Uh, and it is being reinforced uh, by the unified media messaging uh, that they have there through Fox News, through, you know, their particular, uh, you know, blogs, uh, you know, uh, Telegram lists, WhatsApp lists. And uh, what's happening more and more is that because these decisions are being made in primaries, the Republican Party is becoming even more extreme because, you know, moderates are just leaving the Republican Party and not participating yeah. in primaries. So this thing is going to keep evolving. The way you stop this, the way we've seen it pushed back here in Arizona, is you have to stop, you have to start giving them electoral losses and prove to the point yes. where extremists yeah. can't win. And then hopefully there is some type of fixing. Now, the problem that you have here is that Donald Trump controls the message and the money of the Republican Party. So it's going to be very difficult for, for them to do that until Donald Trump is defeated one more time. So Cruz, Cruz, is, Cruz is one figure. Kevin McCarthy strikes me as a somewhat similar figure. I mean, you know, he, he has gone from, I think, you know, saying the president bears responsibility to, you know, going yeah, and kissing Kevin his ring. And now essentially... Go ahead. I mean, Kevin McCarthy is, the, is, is Ted Cruz, but just not as smart. So he, he is... He's the, you know, he's the dumber version of Ted Cruz, uh, st still an empty shell of a human being, just as craven as a politician, but just not as smart. Uh, but he'll do anything to become Speaker of the House. He'll align himself with QAnon crazies, uh, you know, uh, Matt Gates, who is, you know, pretty close at some point to hopefully being a diver, being a, a pedophile. You know, this is the type of person that he is, and he'll do it because he wants that title as Speaker of the House. 
And, uh, you know, he's just, again, uh, the dumber version of Ted Cruz in the House. What is your judgment of Mike Pence in all this, who it looks like the committee is going to ask to speak to uh, voluntarily this month? Look, I think Mike, uh, former president, former vice president uh, Pence needs to understand he's not going to be president. He's not going to win a primary because Donald Trump's <laughs> correct. He's never going to support him. Uh, and so he should, you know, go and follow up on the integrity he showed on January 6th. I was on the floor on January 6th. I waited uh, till the final vote was done and I went up and shook his hand. I've disagreed with him a lot. Uh, and uh, but, you know, that day he showed some integrity and I was going to commend him for that. He should solidify uh, his reputation and, and you know, if anything, cleanse his reputation uh, from mm -hmm. being so aligned with, with Donald Trump. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, uh, that's exactly what I would be doing. Sorry, I have a little guy that just popped in. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, we love, we, we, we're, we're big fans of little guys. Hey, hey buddy. Um, I got it. Well, I got it. good. I can have dessert after this. <laughs> good, that, well, you just offer good advice and for any children with an earshot about, uh, earshot about how to conduct yourself. Congressman Ruben Gallego, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, too.